Nelson had not long been appointed commander of his uncle's longboat, which was the rowing boat used to carry men to and from his uncle's ship, which was the HMS Triumph of 74 guns, when he learned of a scientific voyage being equipped by the Royal Society for the North Pole. Because of the anticipated hardships of this expedition, the two specially reinforced ships were not taking boys, they were only taking men. However, thanks to his uncle's influence, Nelson was appointed coxswain of Captain Lutwidge's gig. It's kind of a, a taxi boat. Lutwidge had previously served under his uncle, who was Captain Suckling, and so was well disposed to accept his nephew, Nelson. The expedition comprised two ships, the racehorse and the carcass. The racehorse was captained by Phipps, who was in overall command of the expedition, and the carcass by Lutwidge. The ships were to be piloted by whalers and were to attempt to reach the North Pole. The expedition did manage to reach within 500 kilometres of the North Pole, but the winter was the worst in living memory and the ships were unable to navigate through the ice and so eventually became trapped in a bay surrounded on all sides by enclosing ice, which was threatening to crush them. They tried various means to escape and they had to manoeuvre closer and closer together until they risked collision. There being no possibility of surviving in the conditions without their ships, the crews were set to try to cut away through the ice, which was four metres thick in parts. And there being no wind, the aim of escape was to try and take rowboats to tow the ships through passages which they cut in the ice, while dispersing icebergs, some of which were 90 metres high. Nelson was only 15 years old at the time, but was appointed commander of the carcass's cutter, which was a small sailboat, and he was tasked with looking for a passage in the ice through which the ships might escape. During this time, he reportedly saved the lives of the crew of the racehorse's gig by defending them against an attack from walruses. One of the racehorse's crew had apparently shot and wounded a walrus, which had, together with some of its fellows, stolen at least one of that boat's oars and was attempting to overturn it. Apparently, the walruses would have succeeded in this endeavour, except for the prompt intervention by Nelson, to disperse them. The most famous story from Nelson's youth occurs during this period. One night, he, together with a friend, snuck away from the ship in order to hunt a polar bear. He ignored an order to return to the ship, and despite being urged by his friend to abandon the attempt, he tried to shoot the bear, but his musket misfired. Now, he was reportedly about to engage with the bear in hand-to-hand -hand combat, declaring, let me get at this devil with the butt-end of my musket and we shall have him, before the carcass fired a cannon which scared away the polar bear and probably saved Nelson's life. Both the encounter with the walruses and with the polar bear are well recorded. However, the details of these anecdotal accounts, including Nelson's own version of the story, in which he returned to his captain, telling him indignantly that he merely wished to kill the bear in order to bring its skin to his father, are hard to verify. And as with many of the events in Nelson's early career, these stories may have been exaggerated from telling and retelling and become wrapped up with the heroics of a great man so that it is very hard to separate fact from legend. In any event, the expedition executed a daring attempt to pull the ships to safety. The escape was made during heavy fog, which made it impossible to communicate between the ships, or even determine if they were making any progress at all. The ships did manage to force their way through the ice, and they often collided with them, once with such force that they broke the racehorse's main anchor. There being no hope of completing the attempt on the pole, and nothing else of interest on the Svalbard Islands, where they stopped, the expedition was abandoned and Nelson returned to England.